Hello and welcome to this Young Director Award interview. I'm Daniel Huntley from Shots and joining me today are the directors Christina Amundsen and Emily Talland, who directed the powerful film Isolation, a piece that won gold at this year's YDA in the charity commercial category. Thank you for joining me. Uh, where are you guys calling from today? We are calling from uh, my apartment at Nørrebro in Denmark. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Oh, lovely. I've been there. I've eaten yeah. a lot in Copenhagen, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So congrats on the award. Um, and let's just start at the beginning. So can you tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and your route into directing? Sure. So I started as a producer assistant when I was 18 years old and got into the industry uh, that way. And I just worked my way up uh, and working on a lot of different shoots and uh, when I was 20, I started my own company where I just started making music videos with an editor and a cinematographer and just kept developing music videos, working in the music industry and doing a lot of different projects and then slightly moving towards documentary filmmaking. And then I've just been working the, with that ever since. And um, yeah, so it's a lot like practicing and just doing my work as, yeah director as much as I can. Cool. Yeah. And I have a background in uh, fine arts and architecture. Um, I studied that for many years, working in that field, but always had a big love for movies and cinematography. So I did that a little bit on the side and uh, got really into it for like four years ago, maybe, um, when I started um, assisting different directors and then slowly started doing my own stuff. And um, yeah, been doing that for a few years now. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you were, uh, you won an award last year for the YDA, is that correct? It's actually two years ago. Oh, two yeah. years ago, oh, forgive yeah. me, sorry. Um, I don't know if I'm a young director anymore, but uh, <laughs> that, yeah, I did, that was actually my first film I, I won with two years ago called Period. Yeah. And yeah. that kind of kicked off my uh, my career, if you can say that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, so why did you both want to actually move into directing or become directors? What was the appeal of, of being in control of the whole thing? Well, uh, for me, I think I always wanted to tell stories and tell other people's stories, <laughs> which is like the the basic of directing also. So I was always looking for an excuse to just uh, knock on people's door and get them to tell me, me their stories and then make it into films. So, and also to give uh, people who, uh, some, uh, give people a voice um, through the filmmaking. So for me, I wanted to be a, a director since I was 16, I think. So I just, uh, I knew it already then. Um, <laughs> and yeah. It's a hard question because yeah, they're so it's like it's a big yeah. question it's really it's yeah i don't know it's uh, for me it was it was just uh, i think it's the most powerful tool to tell stories sure. is making films mm -hmm. because it can move people in so many different ways like uh, with sound with photo with acting with all these uh, elements we have in a film yeah, yeah i agree completely <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I think for me, it. I always also dreamt of like doing film. I don't know. I guess it's just being a kid and being like uh, brought up with a dad who really loved films. So it's just watching a lot. But I guess it was just like this magical world in a way. It seems super cheesy, but it, it was just like it was a great ex escape in a way. It's still an escape for me, like going into the movie theater and just sit there and everything else is just blocked out. It's like... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like doing drugs, I guess, <laughs> if I was doing that. No, I, I, I just, and for me, it was also what you're saying. It's really the, I've been working a lot with fine arts and drawing a lot and photographing a lot and also working in fashion and working with music. And I felt like filmmaking was the one like art, uh, like, a, how do you say? It? Yeah, like uh, the dis one, discipline. Yeah, the art discipline where you could actually connect it all and you could also yeah work with people it's a it's a team sport and that's something i've always been missing when i've been doing other kind of art because that has more been like me doing stuff and that's really the beauty of it i think that you're 
you're depending on so many others you can't do it by yourself and that's why I think it's interesting you were saying like uh, being in charge of it all which is probably never been the reason for me at least to to mm. to direct because that's my least favorite part of it to actually uh, to be the one in charge <laughs> yeah but also the beautiful thing is the whole collaboration with so many people uh, that has to like get it all uh, to make sense together in that uh, and I think that is what I really love about it. There's so you're so dependent on so many different people who have different skills, mm -hmm. and then you like put them in one piece together, and it becomes something completely new from that. Yeah, yeah. It's like a delicious meal, and you're the chef. Yeah, you need the different ingredients, and you know you have to take the best ingredients from every <laughs> everywhere yeah. to make one great cool. meal. Yeah, and you're the chef who comes in in the end and put a little salt, and then you're like. Ah, see, now it's perfect. Yeah. And take all so, the so you set all the, the responsibility and all the credit for all the other people's work. Yeah. <laughs> but, <No>. uh, <laughs> okay, so you, uh, you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, giving people a voice. Um, <laughs> That's one of the things about becoming director. So, you know, with this charity campaign, you've obviously given a voice to a cause here. So uh, where did the idea and inspiration for is isolation come from? How, how did it all come about? So we were actually, Emilia and I was uh, actually researching a lot uh, before COVID hit. Uh, we were doing um, interviews with uh, people who's been in domestic violence. And we really wanted to do some, like create a project together. So that started before uh, COVID that we were trying to get into the whole theme about domestic violence. So we kind of get, got this background knowledge uh, about the theme mm. and then when the COVID uh, and the lockdown came it seemed more, even more urgent because there was like a, a huge increase of domestic violence during that time so in that sense it became like even more important for us to do this film mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was like for us we were talking together and we we're like we have to do something about this because this is a huge problem now and and that was what we could contribute with was the film. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a very powerful piece of work. Um, yeah. it's, you know, you've obviously got to be very sensitive with the material because sometimes what you show on screen can be quite triggering for people um, who've gone through, you know, whatever. Um, so, how did you kind of, you know, deal with that? You know, without showing too much but also saying everything, you know, in the work. How, how did you kind of come up with that? So it was actually uh, the interesting thing about this project was also that we couldn't uh, film anything because we were all in lockdown. So we had to find a way to make this film without going out filming. So that was like a whole new way for us to make a film. So we were actually, we, we had to like uh, reach out to our network with directors and cinematographers who could help us make material for us. So actually like the process of the film was also us asking, like making a short brief about the project and mm -hmm. get material from all different amazing people um, who like gave us material. And then we had to actually like make the films while all the material came to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. We were, like, so we got the material, we were looking through it. We were trying to edit while we, got the material so it's like a completely different pr process than I think any of us have tried before yeah that's oh, really interesting I had no idea um oh, so how yeah. long did it take to put together one week <laughs> one week or something yeah it was quite because because the urgency of the the actual um problem or like uh, the, the isolation was so so yeah at that time, it was really um, intense in Denmark, and um, we wanted to have it out as soon. So it was quite interesting to have a, not interesting. It was kind of like a, a very um, we had a motivating to have a deadline that actually uh, could hopefully help some people if we put the work out there to make people aware of, hey, keep an eye out for your neighbor, or remember to call your friends or your coworkers that you're not seeing. Like, mm. making sure that everyone was uh, doing okay because a lot of people were, yeah isolated so we only did it in a week and as Christina said it was yeah we had a dropbox and we just sent out a brief and we really wanted to make work that didn't that wasn't too um usually when you see 
like anti-violence campaigns, it's often, well, it used to be often like where you would portray either the violence, you would see like blue marks and bruises and these kind of things that we felt like was uh, maybe a little too um, expressive in some like, way. Too expressive. And also in that way, you would quite fast tell who is the one who's doing the violence and who is the victim. And we wanted to be a bit more sub subtle in that sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was the brief for the all the DOPs and yeah, some directors as well. And it was really important for us that people could feel the isolation in it. So, and that was, uh, so to create kind of the space of the feeling of being isolated, which is uh, why we also used a lot of sound in it. And that was become a, a very important part for being trapped <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, no, it really comes across in the film, um, most definitely. Um, so have you collaborated on anything before or is this the first thing you've, you've done together? <laughs> it's, it's, the first, it's the first time we collaborated. Yeah. Um, okay. And it was uh, really interesting. It was nice to have someone to talk with <laughs> about the whole process. Yeah. Um, to, there's so many positive uh, things about collaborating also as directors. Um, because you're usually just by yourself mm -hmm. in that sense when you're making the project and the idea. So for us, it was like we could bounce off each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we could we talked a lot about where we were going to take this and also kind of uh, separating your own ego from the project in some sense. Mm -hmm. That you had to be like we're two people, so we have to like also make decisions together and not like just go with your own idea. Sure. So did you have any kind of conflict on the set or the virtual set? Yeah, well, <laughs> I can't, no, I don't think so. But it was, yeah, as you're saying, the virtual set. So like, it was very much, uh, it was the good thing and the beauty of this project, I think, but also the challenge that none of us were sitting in the same room. Everything mm -hmm. was just like, a, the editor was one place, the composer another place, uh, we didn't sit together. Everyone has like separated. So it's nice to be together now. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely more fun to be together. And I guess some th I don't think we had conflicts, but I guess it's a whole new way of learning to communicate when everything is on the phone or like this or in, in writing mm. um, and where you can sense each other. So like you can really get the feeling of how it actually is when you sit together and you sense like, ah, she's in a bad mood today or like she's loud, like which normally doesn't maybe have something to do with the actual pro project you're doing, but it can be something totally different. So that's but, something. But also like the, the work of as a director is also to be with people. So like to be in the same room and sensing and all yeah. this. And there is like the lack of, of uh, the nerve in it was, was hard, I think, because it's like at some point when you're looking at a screen a whole day and not being together with people, it just becomes different in yeah. some sense. Yeah, that's true. And always like sending each other. Uh, I, I was editing uh, some of it and send it to you and then it got back, came back and then we had to talk about it. And it was like, we couldn't just sit and look at it together and make decisions. We had to just send back and forward all the time. How many times did you send it back and forth? I have no idea. Hundreds. <laughs> yeah. No, not that much, actually, because that's also the beauty. It was kind of like we got the material from the yeah from the different people, and we also had made some ourselves. And then it's like that's that's what we have, you know. It's like uh, so we had to make the whole film out of that, and it uh, yeah it was like Dome film in a way. We had so many. Um, yeah, uh, obstacles uh, which made it into what it is. So do you think, so, would you consider um, creating another project in this way again, you know, with, you know, as in like a virtual studio, as it were? I or think it too much? I, would, I would prefer <laughs> uh, the way where you can be with people, but I think also like we are in this COVID situation now. So it also, we have to think differently about how to do projects. So I think it, there also comes like a lot of ideas of how to make projects uh, that are interesting now, I guess. Uh, and also if if we are in a lockdown again, we have to yeah. try keep making films, keep telling stories. Yeah. And it's that was really interesting to see it's actually possible uh, to, to, to gather people and 
we did feel a, a like a really nice collective spirit around it because everyone has been bored in their houses making sourdough dough bread or like uh, painting the bathrooms and they were ready to do yeah well same here and people were ready to to focus and making films so it was a nice way to to get people um yeah going yeah that's true because it Yeah, even though we couldn't be together, I felt like also because because we had so many people involved in this project. Like there's so many people who send our us material. We had like editors, uh, composers, and you know like all these people who are part of it. And it was uh, just when we were done and send it out and like feel the whole network spirit towards the project it was really nice. Then it felt like oh, we all did this together. Yeah, you know? must be such a good feeling. Um, just going back to the film. Um, so what kind of feedback did you get for it? Um, you know, when it was re released, you know, how, uh, what were people saying about it? Mm, there was, uh, I, yeah. yeah, I think I actually like, what, uh, I talked with one the other day who said she cried. Um, so <laughs> a lot of people have been crying to it actually. Yeah. Yeah. They've been touched or cried to it. I think also I talked with a lot of people who's uh, had bad childhoods. Mm -hmm. or felt like the like the worst part of uh of like was the summer holiday being trapped with your parents if you're in a bad home so they could see themselves in that film because it's like uh, you don't understand like because as a child you have like the your free time is actually going to school because you get out of the home or going somewhere else and so i think a lot of people i talked with understood how it Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. also because it it's so subtle subtle in that sense yeah. yeah and i think that's actually what made us the most happy of course it's wonderful to 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 win a beautiful award as the yda that's like uh, as directors it's it's amazing to get that uh, acknowledgement you say that not being acknowledged in that way but it was actually also really really nice to hear from the organization working with violence and people working with violence that they felt like this was a very real portray of how it is and mm -hmm. I think that was something that made us yeah very happy yeah. that it didn't feel too fake it didn't feel forced it didn't feel like now we are making a film about violence but more like this is actually a little uh, look into how the lives of people living in isolation like this mm -hmm. um, and I think that that was really nice to hear. And I think one of, because we talked with a lot of organizations about uh, during our research and uh, one of the things that's really stuck with me is that some of them told me that every time we put some material out about this, like a video out, people call. Is, yeah. Is the sound? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, no. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah. No, so like every time uh, there's a video out about the themes, um, people call and get help or at least they, they they see it and they feel less alone maybe yeah and I mean as a filmmaker that is for me one of the most important things about making films if it actually can change something or if like just one person calls and get help that's amazing I mean that is mm -hmm. that feels more important than anything for yeah sure. you've definitely done your job then as a director <laughs> right. Right, for sure um so do you both plan to work in the industry advertising industry after this and uh you know if so what excites you most about that prospect you know working with other uh causes or working for brands or you know fashion or music what i would definitely want to work with more ngos and more campaign like this um that works with the with people and again giving a voice to people um, and also I think it's yeah to be in the also being a, in the advertisement um, we are both at Bacon so uh, there's also like a prospect of working more with the different commercials in that sense okay yeah um, and I guess I've, I've I've been oh no sorry no uh, no uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm already working a bit in the advertising, being fortunate to do a lot of fun projects there. And uh, I was recently asked if a, a, a girl can uh, direct a car commercial. So that's my next, uh, I, would love to, I would love to get that opportunity to show uh, how I would uh, direct a car commercial. Nice. That would be fun. Good luck. 
yeah so i mean so what can we expect to see from you in the future car commercials maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of work have you got cooking at the moment then i'm that working <laughs> I'm uh, working with uh, some doc documentaries, but I also really want to make a thriller at some point in the long in the long run. Uh, a feature or a, a short? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice. But there's like long. Yeah, in ten gonna, years, take, five years. It take a while, but like I think for me, it's just uh, trying to improve myself as a director and work a lot, get better, challenge yourself. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah cool okay well thank you very much for taking the time to chat to me today and uh, enjoy the weather in denmark it's raining here in england the same here. very great here <laughs> but we have the whole world <laughs> nice I, th I actually thought that was flowers when we first started and throughout the course oh, of the yeah. interview i actually realized it's europe so it's europe it's yeah. ukraine it's, it's all europe i think yeah. all right okay thanks guys yeah. thank, thank you daniel cool. <laughs> bye, bye.